computer. Hell yeah. All right. So last class, we got our controls made. And we have our joint structure also made from that. And we used the auto rig to create that. We didn't have to go in and manually set these joints ourselves. And so we're, we're set to start moving our character around. Now this character has already been skinned, or in other words, had its mesh bound to that skeleton. So when I move these joints or these points around, let me turn off joints. So it's in. Uh, you can see that the mesh moves along with that skeletal structure, finally. And all these move around as well. You can roll his ankles, all that stuff. You can bend the shoulder. And then I added on some extra controls and bound these these kind of shoulder pads to them when you need to do that. Like for, for I, I don't anticipate anyone needing to add on controls like that for, for this class, especially since this is like an intro class. Uh, but just know that that's, whenever you have a piece of clothing like that, that will need to uh, kind of not clip through the character you would need to add on some joints. But yeah, so we have everything skinned up here. And the, uh, the way that th these are handled in Maya is, uh, let's see, might have gotten a message on Discord and help please. Mine's skinned all weird. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's, like th this doesn't come in default. Like it, your character will not deform like this normally, like for the most part. Um, don't worry about that. that. I just went past the knee joint down there. So that's why it bugged out like that. Um, but yeah, so just the concept of skinning is imagining all of these points on this surface, right? All these vertices, all these bad boys right here. So when we skin the object to the skeleton, you have to select all of those joints, all of these joints in that hierarchy, and the mesh that they're going to be controlling. And then you go to, uh, let me switch over to rigging up here, and you go to skin, bind skin. And it's, it, Maya's gonna, it's going to give it its all on that bind skin. It's gonna try its best to get a good result, but normally it's just not good enough. Like there, there's just too much detailing that needs to happen in here. There has to be different, uh, you're gonna have to go back and kind of mess with these weights. Uh, but to see those weights after you skin, bind skin, go to paint skin weights. You can do that by holding right click and go, oh, let me exit the tool. You can hold right click and this paint skin weights tool will be a new option. I find that to be the fastest way to access the paint skin weights tool. I prefer that you did it this way as well because you're gonna be using this tool a lot during this section and it gets really annoying to, instead of doing that, to go up to uh, skin, paint skin weights right there. It gets like that's, you get to go like, uh, I'm stopping, go up there skin weights and then so I just find it after you bind the skin and have that option available it's fastest to just right click paint skin weights tool right there but yeah so I was talking about each vert on this character being bound to the skeleton and you can see as I go through this list it's a, it's a long list because it has every single joint in the character and there's a lot of face joints on there uh, for eyelids, eyebrows, mouth, uh, controls, and all that. Uh, but let me just start clicking around on this list. So you'll see hero, single hierarchy, clavicle, joint. And you'll see that kind of kind of highlights in white uh, a few of those verts, like a, few, uh, a little bit of that surface of the mesh. And then if you click down that hierarchy, just one, you'll see that 
that influence kind of grows over there. Now, what this white portion is, is how much this joint is controlling it. So if you click on the shoulder right there, the shoulder joint is this point, oops, is this point right here. And we set that up when we were auto, when we did the auto rig. And the point of having it have control over those verts is so that when you rotate this, it's gonna rotate the joint. Don't worry about the shoulder pad right now because it, it, it does some, some auto rotation stuff based on this. Um, when you rotate it, it's rotating that main shoulder joint as well, right there underneath that. So this, this control, is driving this joint. And then this joint has that influence, as you saw, on all of these points down here. So the problem is when you, uh, when you first bind the skin, let's, uh, let's go to, uh, uh, this is already saved. All right, so I'm going to, actually, I'm gonna save it again. Sorry, guys, bear with me. Bear with me. Call it rig uh, example. Save as. There you go. All right, so let me do a fresh binding of that. So I'm going to make this not a ref. Your guys' skeleton also will probably look a little bit different than mine. Uh, it's because I'm exporting to a game engine, so I need a single hierarchy, right? So when I click, what that means is that when I click on this root control right here, you'll see all of the rest of the joints are directly connected to that. Um, the default generation with the auto rig that we use has, I believe these spine joints as kind of free floating points and then beneath, underneath the hood of that rig, it kind of uses a ribbon uh, or, or a spline to kind of connect those and give you control over that, the, those spine joints. But on mine, I do not, I, didn't, I don't have any of that. So if I go in and unbind the skin, so now I just ruined all my skin and my joints no longer, uh, my, my joints no longer have any influence over that model at all. Uh, so the, the, what, what we have to do is, um, first I would use the, the rapid rig menu normally for this because uh, it has a nice little like one click select all joints button. Uh, but if you have a single hierarchy, you don't have to worry about that, but you guys unfortunately will, uh, but I'm just going to bind that skin app again and let's see what it did here. Oh, whoops, it did nothing. All right, one second. And do smooth bind. Here we go. Let's get, I'm gonna go to the options box. Bind to joint hierarchy, there you go. And Maya's thinking pretty hard here. Oh, it's going slow. But right now, it's going through each joint and it's comparing the distance between them and uh, also kind of the volume of the mesh. And it's trying to get its best placement that it can on these joints. So let's bend it and see what goes on. So you can see that now when I bend that shoulder, it's, bend, it's kind of bending into where the rib cage should be, you know? So that's just kind of painful to look at. And if we go look at the skinning weights now, paint skin weights tool, you can see that there's a lot more white on here before or than before. So in the previous version, this white only extended pretty much to these ones right here, these vertices. And then closer to the core, it had a, a gradient fall off. So basically, Maya's default skin or uh, skin bind method 
uh, it kind of grabs a little bit too much. So then you're, you're pulling on verts that you really don't want to. Uh, and yeah, so that, that's basically the entire workflow of skinning is trying to get these, uh, this, this, these gradients to match up with the proper verts that we want. Like we want this shoulder to be controlling pretty much only these things right here, only these verts. But right now it's extended a little bit and the, the weight of these verts should be more on say the spine, you know? So if we go check out the spine, we'll click on spine 01. And so there's a, like the majority of it's black because it's, the skin is not controlling much of these outer parts of the rig. But like right here, you can see that it's, it's kind of moving up to the top. So that's like my spine. Spine one is controlling only the stuff above that spine joint. Uh, the root joint has a lot of influence in here. And you can see it's bleeding into the, uh, these legs and these like armor plates. Uh, unfortunately, that's not very good because these need to be like one to one with these controls. So we need to fix that. Uh, but let me go over, let me walk you through kind of the process of painting these weights. So uh, imagine this is an arm. Uh, it doesn't look much like an arm. It's just pretty much a tube. Uh, but let's get some joints in there. So I'm going to go to my skeleton and create joints. And let's go to the top view. And I'm just going to create a joint at the top. And then one right here. And one at the end. So we now have that joint structure in there. And we kind of want this arm, quote unquote, to, to move this way, to bend along that. Um, and normally you'd go through the process of creating that uh, control hierarchy and then having that drive the skeleton. But I'm just gonna leave it as uh, a mesh and joints. And let's go to bind skin and bind that skin. So now let's take a peek at those skin weights. You have joint one and, oh, it got a little bit of that end point as well, strange. And joint two, yeah, this one did too. So notice how, notice how this portion of the model isn't completely black, which means that this joint has a little bit of control over this back spot. So if we go in and start rotating this, see how it's like bending that back part a little bit there? So uh, what we need to do is paint on this to fix those, right? And so I'm gonna go into my paint skin weights tool. And I'm going to select that first joint. And then you can see uh, you have a, a few different operations in here. So you have replace, which is just gonna take whatever value is on that vert and then uh, override it basically and put in whatever value you have in there. Uh, and it's, it's basically, these four buttons uh, that control that. However, I kind of only want you guys to use add and smooth. I would not recommend replace because that's going, that has the potential of pushing your skin weights all around the mesh in a way that you don't want to do that. Uh, so if we go to add, and I have a really tiny brush right now, I think, or it's really big, one or the other. So if I hold B, and left click drag, and then you can see that it has a bunch of, uh, I, ha I have that radius of the brush. What, 11, and Kevin, and, oh, okay. Jordan, Jordan's finding some, some friends amongst the, uh, the Zoom chat. So right now I have that, that gradient in there. And since I'm on add, it's going to uh, it's going to add whatever value I have in this value slider here 
to that already existing gradient. So if I just paint over that, notice how it's making it a little bit more white now. And you're getting, it, and that, what that means is that that joint is getting more influence over that, uh, over these verts. So now when I move, when I rotate this, you can see that it's kind of crumpling in more. And if I bend it this way, they're kind of folding out. And that's because this joint hasn't bent at all. It's going straight out there. So when the, the more that those points are bound to that joint, the more that the, uh, the more influence this joint, this first joint here has over these verts, the more straight it's going to want to have it because that's where it was. Um, that's where it originally was. So if I, if I paint over these, you can see them kind of bending back in real time to that original spot in there. And clearly like this, this is not how the arm is supposed to deform. I just want you to kind of see what these painting uh, tools do to that. Now smooth is pretty much exactly kind of how it sounds. So it's going to look at the weights on that, the, the influence of this joint and this joint, pretty much all the joints that are on it right there. And it's gonna to try to smooth between them. Now this is good for the, like for, if you have like sharp points like that, and you want to smooth those back in, it's, it's great for that. Um, but, uh, so I, I pretty much, before I move on, I, I don't want you guys to use replace as much because while it definitely has a really good, really good purposes, I find when you're starting out, if you start using replace, you run into a lot of problems. Like you create a lot more problems for yourself than you'd want. Just gonna drink a water right there. All right. So let me bend this back to uh, kind of its natural spot. There we go. There we go. So I basically messed up all the weights on this thing, right? So, uh, and, and the most kind of uh, foolproof method for, for getting proper skinning is to, it's, it's a little bit painful. But if you're having problems skinning, I definitely recommend this method. Uh, you basically go in, select that root joint of whatever you're working with, and uh, it's gonna it, it would flood the entire object. What we're gonna be doing is flooding, but right now it would flood the entire object. If you want to flood specific points, though, you can go into the tool with uh, with specific verts selected. First, let me add these. Uh, let me add these joints to a display layer so I don't click on a bunch. There we go. Uh, so in object, or I'm just going to go go ahead and flood it all. So if I select that first joint and then crank my value up and go to add, and with my opacity at max, do the same click flood, you'll notice that all the skin weights got applied to that. So now when I bend this, this next joint, nothing follows it anymore, right? Now that's, that's the, that's why we paint these influences in the first place. Like, so all these joints need to control the character, right? Like, so if you, if you had on your character like this and you did this, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't bend at all but we need to go back now and kind of start going in and we need to get some influence back on these points, right? So you can go in with add and then kind of paint over these. It's one way of doing it. Uh, it's a little bit sloppy though, because 
you'll notice that some, some of these points look like they're completely painted. Like that one looks pretty painted to me, but like it's still missing a, a little bit of value on there. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can do it that way. Uh, if you are going with the method of like just redoing all of your skin weights, then I, I find it best to always just flood to make sure. So, oh, whoops, let's make that reference again. So with these points, I want that to pretty much be following that joint one-to-one, -one, right? So if I go in there and go into the, the paint skin weights tool with all those selected, and then in add mode at a 100% opacity and 100% value, I click flood. You'll notice how it became like, whoa, all right. Um, oh God, oh God. All right, so let me, uh, let me oh shit. <laughs> well, this is, a, this is a catastrophe, guys. Look at that, oh my God. All right, so I'm gonna flood back onto uh, onto that whole character, and I'm gonna go back into vertex mode, paint skin weights, and notice how I have only those verts selected again. I'm gonna flood that. So now let's try bending this and see what that looks like. Right there. So you see how our arm is now bendable in here but the uh the the sort of you, you can see like if this were an actual arm this, this is not how they bend right like you don't have like that harsh like like face right there sticking out and like you know this crumpled in stuff now i uh, there are tools to kind of make this better but you can fix a, a good amount of it just by uh painting these skin weights and this is the time where smoothing is super useful. So if you go into the smooth setting here, you start painting on that. You can notice that these points are kind of getting more averaged out, right? The influence between them is kind of becoming a nicer gradient. So it, they're not being pulled super far out of where they should be. And Smooth, oh man. If I smooth there, and I can smooth over here as well. And I'm, I'm just switching between the joints to do that. It's getting to be a more reasonable type of bend. Uh, now sometimes the smooth tool kind of messes up when you smooth a point that's ah yeah like right there so if i were to smooth this point you'd expect it to kind of drift back towards the center however uh oh so now it's just not going to do that cool thanks maya thank you maya well sometimes it flips out so i always find it's better to smooth from the the black rather than from pure white and uh we just kind of slowly get a nicer bend in that elbow region. And there, there's a few additional tools for this type of stuff, um, but not, nothing that we need to go into for this class. Um, if you want it to not be as severe when it pulls in, you can kind of adjust this opacity down. Think of it as in like Photoshop opacity, like you, you wouldn't be painting with a brush that has 100% opacity, you'd be like 0.18, so like 18%, you know? And it's a similar to painting in Maya. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of how you go about painting those weights. And yeah, so now you have a, a smoother bend on the outside. This inside, I kind of want it to almost maintain a little bit more mass on the inside. So you know how when you you bend your arm in real life, you kind of get that that in the in the pit of your elbow. 
your, your skin kind of folds on top of itself. So I might go back into joint two because uh, if we want these points to kind of bend out more with the joint, this second joint, we're going to need to paint or it's going to need more influence over those points. So if we go into joint two, and I'm going to leave my opacity kind of low for this, because I'm sure that like I it might pop out too much if I if I leave it high. So if I go in, and kind of start painting over that. You see that? So so they're follow they're now going to start following that that point a little bit more, or that that joint a little bit more. It kind of give us that nice little. Like all, almost like you could see the the kind of forearm of the uh, or the forearm muscles in there, and I'm going to do the same for joint one. So I just paint it a little bit over there. You can kind of see how that would be more of like that bicep binding into the elbow type shape there. And uh, if you wanted to get super detailed in the future with a future character, you could even do stuff like uh, like having uh, corrective blend shapes that activate whenever you bend this. So you would you basically pose your model up like this, and then you would go into the actual model itself and create a blend shape by moving these points, and then it would tell it would link back to Maya that tells it to use certain vertex positions at that bend of this joint. But that's, that's way beyond this class. I, mean, I just want you guys to know that there's some stuff out there to uh, change that as well. Uh, but yeah, so now, uh, with kind of a, a brief knowledge of, of these skin weight things, or of these skin weight tools, we can go back to our character and if I go into the paint skin waste tool remember it's all all under your right click there <clears throat> as long as you've bound the skin if you haven't bound if you haven't gone to uh, if, if you haven't selected the joints and then gone to skin bind skin then it, it, that option will pop up but I really hope that you guys have something there so you can see it uh so you can follow along and kind of get get a little bit more out of this lecture um so if we basically when you're going when you're assessing like how bad that first skin is it's always good to go kind of through these controls in here and kind of just start bending them around <clears throat> Honestly, the, the, the leg isn't too bad. You would need to fix the front of this armor in order to have it pop out as one solid shape. Um, let's see how, the, see how the chest deforms. And that's all right. I, I would kind of want a little bit more uh, of the weight centered on the individual uh, kind of twists and not touching this belt at all. So the reason this belt is moving is because these joints have some influence on there. So if you go into your paint skin weights and then, yeah, notice how the root joint has control over that belt. So ideally you'd want the root to probably have 100% control of the belt if it's like a hard object like that. Uh, and then have that fall off uh, toward, uh, along the core up that spine. So if your, if your skin weights are kind of decent, like this is, this is not, it's not ideal right now. Like this is not I ideal. Um, Especially in this in this chest plate because that that's a solid shape. Can I see the skin weight for the pauldron? Uh, yeah. Well, the 
All right, for, for now, at least, let's see. It'll be a bit confusing, shoulder pad joint, because I have a, I have a whole joint dedicated to that pauldron specifically. So the end result of that, like right now, like if I move around that control, it's like, it's bending this, this metal piece, right? But I, I don't want it to do that. So what I would do is go to vertex, and then since this is kind of a separate object, if I go in here, and then uh, just select all the verts on that side, or on that pauldron, and then go into the paint skin weights tool, the way I'd get them to be proper is to, after that selection is good, navigate to that shoulder pad joint. And then I would just 100% flood that with add and high opacity, high value. And then you'll see that it's 100% white in there now. And when I move this around, it kind of controls that now. Uh, the problem is that this also has influence over these uh, these pieces of mesh, which they shouldn't. Uh, so I would need to kind of take away from that skin value. Now, um, before I go into the into the rest of it, uh, I would want to start fixing up some of these weights, right? If you go in and start clicking around, you can see where those weights lie. And there might be some stuff that you just don't want it to be attached to, right? Like you don't want this shoulder joint attached to this like other armor stuff, right? So, and, and I got this question a lot last semester. It was, it was always, how do I delete weight off something? How do I, how do I delete it? Uh, now there is, there's technically a way that you can do it with replace but it is it is janky and i don't recommend it and instead of asking how can i remove the weight from this uh you can also add that weight to somewhere else right so when you bind that skin to the skeleton these skin weights have to be somewhere on the model right they can't just exist nowhere and a lot of the times, if you if you do end up doing stuff, and these points go to the uh, the the, the uh, verts start like blending to the origin of the scene, then that's what happens when they're uh, like when they lose some of their skin weights through either a bug or some sort of error. Um, but yeah, so I if you're if you're in a situation where you're like, how can I subtract this weight from this? underlying area I, I you should instead be like be thinking which joints on the model can i bind those two instead or can, can i paint those two instead so that they're no longer on this shoulder right and the one, one of the best ways to identify where these lie is well one by clicking around here so you, we can tell that the shoulder has a lot of influence on there so if we wanted to subtract weight from this shoulder pad joint this one right here to that shoulder then we would need to click on this shoulder and add the influence from there so now notice i definitely just crumpled those ones right there but notice how they're no longer attached to that shoulder pad joint. So that, that was, however, that was the improper way to do it. I just wanted to show you that that's, that's what I'm talking about when, uh, when uh, like uh, as a way of subtracting weight from something. But the, the true way to do this, it has to do with identifying where those, that influence lies. Right, and I said one good way of doing that is by clicking on these shoulder joints, or just in the joint on the joints in the area. Uh, another one, though, 
is uh let's see Is it? It is a. It's like a super basic name that I always lose. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So it's in uh, Windows General Editor Component Editor, and uh, you'll have a bunch of different tabs up here, but the one we're looking for is Smooth Skins. And so if I go into vertex mode and select some of these verts in this area, you'll see a, a big list of all of the vertex weights. Now, you might be thinking right now, Mike, this is a bunch of, this is a bunch of nerd stuff. I wanna be looking at numbers right now. I wanna be looking at that gradient. But <laughs> trust me, if you, there's gonna be a point when you're painting the weights on these things, and then there'll be a, there's just like one vertex out of them all that will just be moving in a super strange way. And you'll be like, how, what the hell is going on there? And so it's always useful to, to know about this Windows General Editor Component Editor. Because then you can just click on that individual vert that's giving you a problem. And you can see exactly which, as long as you're in the Smooth Skins tab, you can see exactly where those weights lie. So you have like the, the, these three points. You can even just get as specific as one point. But you can see that they're bound to shoulder pad, L shoulder pad joint, the neck joint, spine top joint, L clavicle joint, and L shoulder joint. And this will honestly save your butt in some situations because like, like I was saying before, you might, not, you might have some, some kind of rogue verts that you don't know where they're locked to. It's like, I'm going to get a drink of water. And it'll be giving you a headache, but uh, the always, what ends up happening is that they're just bound very slightly to some other uh, joint in this skeletal structure. Uh, one thing to note is that th this total column shows the total amount of weight on that joint. And there's a trend right, right there. So I just selected a bunch of uh, verts in there. But notice how they all add up to total one. So Maya, behind the scenes when you're painting, if you're taking influence and adding it to a joint, it is doing that subtraction from that other joint because the end result always has to end, uh, equal one, right? So the max you can have of influence on one of these is one or that pure white. So if you go in, and let's find that shoulder pad joint. Uh, let's hope I still have it. Ah. So these are all one, because I flooded that value of one and that opacity of one to that joint. Um, but that, uh, by virtue of doing that, it basically removed all the other joints from having influence over that shoulder. So if you wanted to go get these to be in a more, let's go into vertex mode, in a more regular position, <clears throat> kind of need to go in and identify which joints are in this sort of hierarchy right there that are, that are influencing it. So these are all the ones that are kind of telling it where to go. And we basically can just go in and this, this is a pretty neat method for this sort of thing. It, it might be um, might be a little bit niche in its, in its uh, usefulness, but uh, you can kind of go in and you can even type these values in there. 
let's see. So let me, let me get it with one point on there. So if we want to remove that shoulder point, uh, shoulder pad joint right there, we can set that influence to one, uh, to zero. And you'll, you'll notice it got removed from the list. So now that shoulder pan, uh, oh my gosh, I'm really struggling with that word. That shoulder pad joint is not influencing that vert at all. So if we do that to all of them in here, let's see, L shoulder pad joint. Click on that top column right there. And just enter zero. You can notice that none of those verts are now following that. And it kind of just averaged it out between the rest of those joints. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, another way of doing it is in our paint skin weights tool. So if we go in and uh, like I was doing before, adding the skin weight on other joints to take away from that joint, uh, you'll see that, that it, was, it was basically subtracting it from that shoulder pad joint. However, uh, that wouldn't be exactly proper because we want to, we would be also taking away from other points, uh, I mean, other joints in the skeletal structure. So if we, if we wanted to get a nice weight on these ones in here, what we're going to be using is locking. Now locking is probably the most important part of this process. Because if you're like, look at how many joints we have in this list. It's insane. There's just hundreds of that. All right, probably not hundreds, uh, but there's a lot of them. There's a lot. But if we go in and say, I want to lock this shoulder pad joint, I just click this little padlock shape right there, that little padlock button, and I can no longer do anything with the weights that are bound to that. So if I, on this shoulder, start trying to add to that shoulder, you'll see that they are moving, they're doing things, uh, but the, the shoulder pad didn't let go of any of its uh, influence or control over those joints. And that's basically the opposite of what we wanna do. The way that we can use this to our advantage though, is to use this little button right here that selects everything else, or you could manually go in, select the top one, shift select the bottom one, and lock them all. So basically now all of our joint weights are locked in. We can't move anything. And you can isolate between these two shoulders, uh, the, the shoulder pad joint, this one up here, and the shoulder. And if you unlock both of those, now if I add on that shoulder joint, I'm not taking away any weight from, uh, uh, be careful not to color on that, from, from the other surrounding joints. Uh, someone have a question? I just heard some, some movement around in there. Let me know, let me know. So I, I want this kind of conceptual stuff to sink in. So I just painted between those ones. But the, uh, the, the other weights in the area did not get affected. So the classical still has influence over that area. It's just only taking away from that shoulder pad. Whoops. This can be useful because you're gonna have to redo a lot of the a lot of the weights on that initial bind. Um, and so you'll notice that I had a bunch of influence painted out here, and it looks like it's 100% bound to that shoulder joint. When I click away and click back, you'll notice that it kind of eased it out. And that's because uh, it, it will display that you took a lot of the weight from those other areas.
all this stuff. But in reality, it kind of, it, it's still, uh, since everything else is locked, it's making sure that it's not overriding, say, this clavicle's skin weights, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the tools that we're using. Um, but it is, it's almost five. So I'm going to take a quick like five minute break. I'll be back at 501, 502. And I'll, I'll show you my approach to doing more of the character. That was just kind of a, a use case for some of this component editor and this adding kind of function to subtract from different weights, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break. I'll be back around 501, 502, and yeah, I'll see you then.
All right. So I'm back. Let me see. Look forward to the recording because I'm going to need to look at this six more times. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now I I already I have a, a, a tutorial up there for this already. Um, and it's going to be, and it shows, it's called like my simple skinning method, something like that. And I recommend that one um, over my other skinning tutorial. Um, because I'm going to show you kind of the way I approach skinning in here. Um, but yeah, so, so I, the, the, the first part was just kind of, going over actually I'm, I'm going to stop the recording from now